Governor Walls here, and what we can have with you folks here today. Well, thank you, Rita. Thank you all for taking time to come out, and I just uh, express my gratitude to the folks of Iowa um, in the good ribbing on this. I do think we do agree on this, that this is at least one of the top two state fairs in the country. We've already eliminated Texas, but I have to tell you, my friend John just gave me a peach, and uh, I met a cousin from Butte, Nebraska originally, a riser who my mom was. Uh, kind of sums up what we are in the Midwest. That's We're really neighbors. an Iowa thing to do, is to walk down the state fair and find a cousin. And you find a cousin, know yes. Visit. Well, I think that there's, uh, in that commonality, look, we, we share a lot. Um, I have the privilege of being the governor of Minnesota now, but I'm a public school teacher like Rita. We both grew up on farms. We understand that that's the core values. Agriculture is still king in Minnesota and in Iowa. We not only feed, clothe, and power Minnesota and this country in Iowa, we do it for the country and the world. Uh, we're also known as two states that have the best public education systems in the country. Many of us proud products of that system, proud products of the investments of generations that went before us. And we also understand, I would make the case of this, there's a little bit of things being a good neighbor. You hear the thing about a good fence. There's also a, a, an adage in Minnesota, I know it's here in Iowa, mind your own damn business on things, meaning we protect personal freedom. There's no need for government to be in the exam room when women are making their decisions. We've always had local control of our schools, and as a teacher, I've always welcomed parents into the classroom. And what Rita's talking about this is the opportunity that the Biden and Harris administration has given states like Minnesota and Iowa, if they take advantage of it, is, is expanding opportunities around education, expanding opportunities around health care broadband investments that have never been seen in this country before to connect us together, and then those investments that we know need to be made on clean energy and a transition to the economy. Look, you can go over, and I just watched a soapbox speech. We're going to hear complaints about this. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the history of the country in these areas in Minnesota. We have one of the fastest growing economies in the world. COVID did not just hit Iowa and Minnesota. It hit the entire planet. Under President Biden's leadership, we came out of that. We saved lives. We moved forward and we strengthen that very core issue of being able to make things in America, manufacturing. The president was just in New Mexico talking about that. In Minnesota, we're seeing new microchip manufacturing facilities spring up all over because of the chip fact. And as Rita was saying, in Minnesota, we received about $658 million from the federal government, another $100 million from the state to make sure that every single community is connected. So we got an opportunity, and I get it. Those folks are going to want to fight the culture wars. You're not going to find us debating the values of slavery. You're not going to hear those types of conversations. You're not going to hear us talk about reducing personal freedoms. In Minnesota, we're not interested in banning books. We're interested in banishing hunger from our schools. It's why we provided meals for every single child. That's what's coming out of the administration. We've got an opportunity to continue to move this country forward. We have an opportunity in the states to use the policies that the Biden-Harris administration put forward to strengthen mid middle class, to strengthen and build from the bottom up and the middle out. Those are real opportunities. I think the time at a state fair, it's not about wearing your school colors. It's not about rooting. It's about understanding what our children are counting on us to do, addressing the issues of our time being optimistic about the future, making sure everyone has a chance to thrive. And if there's anything that bound Iowa and Minnesota together, that sense around innovation and moving forward, we fed the world. We try and lay claim to Norman Borlaug, and so do you. We try and lay claim to our great land-grant universities. And when they talk about which states have the best public education systems, I'll stand no insults to either Minnesota or Iowa, because they rank the two best in the country. And it's not by mistake when you invest in these things, Minnesota just moved into being one of the top five business-friendly states, kicking Texas out of this. We believe in allowing personal freedoms to work. We believe that the markets can work as long as people are centered in that. And we believe when you invest in our littlest Iowans, Minnesotans, and Americans, the results we're going to get will pay off for decades to come. So I'm grateful to be here. Uh, I'm grateful for the hospitality that folks are showing. Um, and I just want to know this idea that we're dividing this country we're saying that some have and some have not. And dividing these states around a ridiculous red-blue map is not true. Our core values remain the same. The things that built this country remain the same. And I think we're going to have an opportunity here in about 17 months to have a clear choice between moving forward, where everyone's included and we address our problems, or fighting small, petty, divisive issues that do nothing to strengthen this country. So we're glad to be here. Glad to take some questions. Governor, what do you think that's going to be
Um, I'll let Rita talk about it. I think the president's out everywhere. I know Vice President uh, Harris was here two weeks ago. I think you're going to see a lot of surrogates. And I just have to tell you this, that governors saw the difference in the two administrations, especially during COVID and the economy. We have a, a pretty good perspective on this. And so I think you'll see a lot of folks coming here to stump for the president.